Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, I'm at the beach looking for these things and having some success. On the weekend when the CLA Game Fair was cancelled, we have a roundup of what everybody did instead. First, Roy Lupton gets to walk around a London shopping centre in daylight with an air gun. <laughs> You can take the man out of the countryside, but you can't take the countryside out of the man. Roy Lupton has taken a deep breath, had his jabs, and left the Garden of England to go up to the big smoke for a dirty job. We're in central London at the moment. Well, we're not allowed to uh, disclose our location. There's a hell of a problem that they've got with pigeons, and uh, I mean, as you'll see in a minute, they're, uh, they're defecating over everything. Um, over the windows, over the pipework, um, over the pavement, so uh, for a, a shopping centre, especially for the food outlets, it's not overly hygienic. It's a, a contract that uh, has to be done um, in combination with uh, working the, uh, the birds to scare the pigeons and uh, shooting a few of the pigeons as well. So we're here tonight to try and reduce the population a little bit, but uh, yeah, when you're used to walking around with uh, grass under your feet, coming to central London is a bit of a shock for the system. London is under aerial assault from pigeons and parts of it are covered in guano. Car parks, walkways and shopping centres like this one. The thing is, Londoners are so used to it, they've stopped noticing. But the birds are a real problem and by using hawks one week and air rifles the next, Roy is trying to keep his avian foes in check. No, I mean, very, very odd, isn't it? I mean, we're uh, right in the middle of, uh, some, you know, a, uh, an urban environment here. So we've got high-rise flats um, and shopping centres and whatever else surrounding us. And obviously, when we're taking the shots, then you're making sure that you've got a, a solid backstop, as you would with any other shooting. So we're shooting into the walls, making sure that the pellets can't go awry anywhere. And again, we're only using um, sub-12 foot-pound air rifles. But obviously, it's we're here to do a yeah, pigeon coming in. We're here to do a a pest control job and so we're just trying to get as many as we can as quickly as we can and down he goes you can see that the pigeons are so used to seeing people that even after a shot 30 seconds later more pigeons are coming in so it's, it's literally just standing in the same point and uh, they'll just come in land again and uh, away you go so i just got my necks craning all over the place there's pigeons flying all around us it's just absolutely mad just like in any shooting situation, Roy has to be absolutely sure about shot placement. He also needs to find the most stable position to take that shot. In London, tree trunks become signposts or concrete pillars. Five bar gates become brick walls or wheelie bins. They're the same techniques for shooting as we would be in any other situation um, and the same rules apply. And obviously in a situation like this then safety is paramount and you've got to make sure that uh, you can account for uh, where every single pellet's going to end up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's exactly the same. Um, so you're getting a good solid rest, you're looking for the shot, uh, you're trying to take the safest shot possible. Normally, um, when I'm shooting pigeons, then I try to go for head shots. In, when we've been doing it tonight, I've been doing a lot of uh, chest shots, um, just because it, you've obviously got uh, a little bit more margin for error and the birds are dropping down. So, so long as you're, you're shooting through the vitals, through the spine or whatever else, then they're dropping nicely. Um, you know, so it, it, exactly the same. You've got to have the same amount of respect for the animals that you're shooting and that you're accounting for. You're just trying to make sure that the shots that you're taking are as efficient as possible. Now, you may notice Roy's pest controller mate is blurred out. The poor lad is so frightened of attacks by anti-hunters, he specially asked to be left out of this film. Back to the story, instead of merging into his natural environment like a chameleon, Roy is wearing his clubbing gear and sporting an air arms air gun for tonight's antics. It attracts attention from the police and shoppers alike. Hiya. You are right? How are you doing? Oh, we're doing pest control. Pest control. Yeah. Head reference number already, yeah? A young woman questions Roy's parentage and makes further suggestions about what he could do with himself. I know. But he has heard it all before. It's got a relay. 
I think it's the same as uh, whenever you come into a, a position of uh, conflict regarding shooting or field sports or whatever else, as long as you're polite and try and explain your side of it, then uh, really that's all you can do and, uh, and just hope that they do understand um, and really not take too much umbrage with it. But, yeah, no, very interesting. A few distractions don't deter the man from finding his ferals and the bird bag is building. They're being knocked off their perches from every angle, sometimes in front of passers-by. We know his urban transformation is almost complete when locals start asking him for Sorry? directions. No, yeah, you're fine. You're fine, no problem. I think you're a traffic wheel. Hello. <laughs> The birds find sanctuary everywhere. This centre has spent thousands on netting and big spikes, but the ferals are not easy to keep on top of. Some are even using safety glass to keep out of reach of Roy's pellets. You can see here, you know, some of the, the mess and damage that's caused, especially in an environment like this where people are walking through, so they pick up the, the mess and etc. on their feet. And up here you can see where the pigeons have been nesting, and it's just a, a complete health hazard up in the rafters um, with all the nesting material um, and the, the years of you know, detritus that's built up in there as well. So it's a, it's a haven for muck and disease. So uh, you know, again, another highlight of why this, uh, this sort of work's got to be done. The guys both enjoy using the hawk for jobs like this, keeping the pigeons on their toes or what remains of their toes. Now and again we chance it and throw a light across the buildings to see if the birds will stay put. Some do and they don't see what's coming. It's all thanks to a new torch Roy has been given to play with. This has been absolutely invaluable tonight and um, this is a Nightmaster by Taclight and uh, we've just been sent it to uh, have a go with. We're going to try it out on the foxes and it's meant to throw out the same sort of beam as a, a conventional lamp would. Um, that you plug in and it's just a, a little handheld torch. Um, but absolutely superb, the beam on it is brilliant. Obviously very odd, it's got a, a square beam there, so you can see, I think it must be the filament in there. Um, but uh, yeah, from, uh, from what we've seen so far, I'm uh, really looking forward to having a play with the foxes. All right, let's go and find some more pigeons. It's been a quite extraordinary evening, walking the streets of London with rifles popping off ferals. As we leave our superhero to his work, we can all sleep safer knowing he's making London a cleaner and better place. Just shine the bat signal into the night sky, or better still, give Roy a ring and he will come and clean up pigeons around your shopping centre too. Now if you enjoyed that piece about shopping centres and rifles, you'll love the shooting show. You'll see a clip of it appearing on the screen just there. It's coming to you from one of the most incredible shooting venues in the world. Bisley. Next, from shopping centres with guns to real news, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. So, will it be a bumper grouse season or not? With less than three weeks to go until the start of the grouse season, reports are coming in from across the UK over whether this year's brood survived the wet weather. Gunsonpegs.com predicts a patchy season. William Powell Sporting confirms this, saying that England would be better with substantial numbers east of the Pennines where the rain was less heavy. The borders look reasonably good, and the Angus Glens will see many moors curtail their season. Elsewhere, says William Powell Sporting, it's patchy to very patchy. Scottish Natural Heritage have issued deer managers with a shoot on site call after muntjac deer were spotted in Dumfries and Galloway. The non-native species were spotted in private forestry and Scottish Natural Heritage claims that if muntjac populations become established in Scotland, it could cost up to £2 million a year to manage. Forest officials have said that a leopard that killed a six-year-old girl near Mumbai last week can't be trapped. They say they cannot try to catch the Malund man-eater because trapping in the Sanjay Gandhi National Park is illegal. Instead, they've intensified their night patrols and put a 10-member rescue team on standby in case of an emergency. Residents of an illegal settlement on the park have been requested not to venture out after dark. As the government-sanctioned badger cull approaches, die-hard antis are resorting to increasingly desperate attempts to gain public support. Speaking at a League Against Cruel Sports meeting in Taunton this month, Brian May accuses shooters of killing hundreds of badgers in the West Country and dumping the carcasses on the roads to make them look like roadkill. What is going on at the moment is culling. We are in a cull at the moment. If you drive around the West Country, you will see hundreds 
if you spend enough time on the roads. Of badges who seem to have been killed on the roads, but we have very, very good um, information from many people that these badges are being killed, that they're being shot, they're being gassed, they're being poisoned and, and thrown on the road. If you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link for the full hilarious story. Now, is he fibbing or telling the truth? You decide. The week before last, we featured Northern Ireland Deputy First Minister Martin McGuinness talking about his passion for fly fishing. However, he told us one fishy tale that has anglers up in arms. Listen to it and you decide. I pulled the rod so hard that the rod broke in two, but the salmon stayed on the line. I was standing up on the bank. Okay. I didn't know what to do. The only thing I could do was get down under the river. The salmon was lying at the side of the river. I left it with two hands and threw it up under the bank. As one angry forum post puts it, you can lie in politics, but you can't tell lies about fly fishing. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, the map that matters and Calendar UK. Welcome to Calendar, here with the most important dates for the diary and seasonal reminders. First off, it's sunny, enjoy. Second, the moon is waxing crescent, heading for a full on the 2nd of August, with the spring tides soon after. That's not all that's happening at the beginning of August. There's also a great chance of seeing some new rifles in action. In Ilkley, West Yorkshire, Stead Hall Firearms are hosting a summer spectacular with GMK on Saturday the 4th of August. They're opening the range at Stead Hall Rifle Club from 10 till 3, giving visitors the chance to test fire the latest kit from Seiko and Tika. It's going to be an event for all the family with archery and air rifle ranges, as well as refreshments and barbecues. So please turn up and support your local range. For more information, contact John Fernley or visit steadhallfirearms.co.uk. To the south of the country and the Cornwall and Devon Countryman's Fair is taking place on Sunday, the 5th of August at Warrington Park in Lawsiston. They're promising a shopper's paradise with loads of trade stands, catering and licensed bars. The main arena will also be full of entertainment, covering falconry demos, gun dogs, wildfowler Chris Green and the Knights of Middle England. As usual, the fair will be supporting local charities, so please go along and take advantage of a fair that survived the summer downpours. Visit countrymansfair.co.uk. Now for some seasonal signposts. On the deer front, the roebuck rut is upon us and the countryside is awash with British, German, Dutch and Danish trophy hunters. You can hear more about this handsome fella on next week's programme. With pheasant and partridge poults arrived at many shoots, keepers are redoubling their fox shooting efforts. It's not been a red letter breeding year for the rural red fox, but the urban red fox has fared better, cared for as they are by Brian May. Also coming up, you're allowed to sell hares from next week, the 1st of August, in England, Scotland and Wales. And you should have been shooting geese under licence in the Isle of Man from the 1st of July. On the fishing front, the forums report good salmon runs in between washouts on Scotland's east coast rivers and excellent runs up rivers along the west coast of Ireland. That was this week's calendar. If you want to be on the map that matters next week, telling the globe about your event, talk to James. James at fieldsportschannel.tv A bucket and spade holiday on the beach. Bad news for your average grouse shooter and fox hunter? Not a bit of it. You need one of these and one of these. And we're going to catch prawns. Now, much as I love all kinds of venery, I'm not very good at them, but get me onto one hunting subject while in the pub and you will need to have the exit in sight, because I do know my stuff about prawning. Because prawning has been the Jacobi family summer sport of choice for more than a century. Now, the prawning net, uh, the Jacobi family has developed very carefully over a period of centuries. Uh, can you talk me through it? Because we don't buy these nets, do we? we no go, chance, no chance. chance no. You get a uh, rake handle which is uh, one and a half metres long minimum. Right. Uh, a pair of, uh, a, a, a length of uh, reinforcing rod, just strong enough to strong be, enough be stiff. Like yeah. And uh, uh, stiff enough not to bend. That's, that's the metal The metal frame which goes right round here. Yes. 
uh, a length of uh, ordinary galvanised wire. Got to be galvanised. Well, otherwise it gets rusty. It's, it's, uh, it's quite crazy. Yes, water, yeah, yes, yeah. wash it off anyhow. Uh, I've used some bits of old plant tie, but the best thing is stripped cable. And you tear the, the guts out of the cable and wrap it round. This protects the net, and it's always used that way up, not that way up, because it would cut through the... Uh, uh, through the netting, the other side. Netting can be got from various suppliers. This is a, a, an ancestral and vestigial stock. <laughs> and if you bend this into a very narrow, long device, which can go deep in, a full arm's length plus the stick, and then bring it back very slowly, we call that not a net, but a pronicator. <laughs> <laughs> Widemouth Bay, spelt Widemouth Bay, is one of the many beaches on the north coast of Cornwall and Devon where the rocks slope at the right angle to encourage prawns not to go out with the tide. Choose a big tide and fish those pools in the two hours up to low tide. So prawning, when did prawning start for us? For us, uh, right from the word go, I think. Uh, my grandfather, my, uh, your grandmother's, my mother's uh, father certainly did it. Uh, I was taught in 1948 by a man who's already 92, so he would have been born in uh, 1850s, uh, and uh, he uh, took us out prawning and showed us what to go for. Let's just look at that big lobster again. Dear me, whatever happened to that good-looking lad? There is lots of history at Widdermouth. Black Rock is where the wrecker Featherstone operated, waving his lamp to attract ships to certain death. He was condemned to make ropes of sand for eternity, which is of course impossible. There are the tank stoppers designed to prevent Germans from landing in the Second World War. When I was a child, they still ran all the way along the beach itself. Now they're used for storm defences. And the place is a magnet for surfers, which gives you something to do in the run-up to high tide. There are many sorts of seaweed here. This is bladder rack, and it's got bladders in it. Can you pop uh, those? Yeah, like you it? can pop those. <laughs> Satisfactory. Uh, very useful for aunt's beds. <laughs> um, and uh, then that's not much good. You don't get many prawns here. You're after a thing called uh, uh, Leander serratus, the big prawn. But what you want is further uh, down the beach, saw rack. And you can see what it is. It's got the serrated edge to its uh, fronds. Now, and I, that's I called, call that serrated rack. Yes, yeah, serrated rack or saw rack or whatever. Fucus serratus. This one is Fucus vesiculosus, if you want. We're not, we're not you know, taking this unseriously, are we? No, we're, no, no. Once no, you no, get no, the Latin no. names of your quarry, you know, you're already <laughs> Oh, yes. Now, aren't you? Well, the, you've got two sorts of prawns. One is the nice big one, Leander serratus, with a big serrated rostrum on the front. Yes. Okay. I don't uh, like you taking those liberties, you know. Yeah, but he, he, he's moribund and about to be eaten. Um, and uh, then you've got a much smaller one, Leander Squilla, but that's no good. And you also have the uh, shrimp here, which a lot of people get confused between shrimps and prawns, right. don't they? Shrimpers are a lowly cast of people, <laughs> <laughs> and they have a, a broad net with a bar, oh. and they shuffle it through the tide, on the, uh, through the sand, and they filter the sand, just like so many uh, uh, basking sharks. And uh, the, 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 the uh, sand shrimp is a flattened thing, rather small, but not this quality of, yeah, of game no, at all. No, this and is, uh, you will get a few on the beach further down. I mean, this is one of the Cornish Big Five, really, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes Lobster, yes. sea trout, prawn... Uh, pra uh, uh, trout, trout is a vertebrate, and I don't count those. Oh, right, okay. uh, certainly lobster, spider crab, uh, edible crab and uh, prawn among the uh, crustaceans. Those are the ones you really want. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we prawnographers hitch the crustacea equivalent of a gold reef by moving the net slowly down a narrow ledge. On these occasions you can't beat a pincer movement with another member of the family, preferably the Jacoby family. And then, as the tide ends the day's prawning, there is the joy of eating them. Boil the water they came from, using fresh water is of course morally reprehensible, drop them in and cook them until their eyes go black, which is about two minutes. Then shell them and eat them on brown bread. My son Edmund will maintain family tradition by demonstrating how to shell a prawn. You bend, bend its head off, then peel the skin off by putting, putting your nails under their legs and peel the shell off, the long shell. This is the worst bit about it. When you finish, you peel the tail off, and then you can put it in your sandwich. 
Field Sports Channel, talking to the expert's expert there. It's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We've talked about them before, and we will talk about them again, I'm sure. Young country sports are lads from Oxfordshire, who this time have got together to go rabbit shooting, rabbit lamping and a bit of foxing. Who says kids aren't interested in shooting? Staying in the world of practicalities, pigeon shooting on wheat will not receive the attention of trading standards officers because it is exactly that. Tweeds and pheasants is, as he says, shooting pigeons on a field of wheat. Meanwhile, while amazing crow calling with hands is not a film by a German bloke called Hans, but a simple method crow hunter's grandfather showed him on how to call in crows with nothing more than your hands. A couple of fishing videos for you this week. Nicky Brown does a lot of filming for us, and he has his own YouTube channel, TechSec Media. This week, his film Nick and Ben, the Fly Fishing Men, get an airing as they fish at Lechlade Fisheries in Gloucestershire. It's like a piranha movie, but with trout. More like Jaws is this week's top fishing video across YouTube. Giant Monster Sturgeon 12 foot 4 inches 1100 pounds Fraser River Fishing from Great River Fishing sounds like a yeehaw American monster fish story, except it's filmed in Canada and the anglers are Brits, Michael and Margaret Snell, who land what could be the biggest fish ever caught on rod and line in freshwater. Back to shooting and let's get techie. How to make a rifle rest is presented by another YouTube star, Hunter's Vermin, who gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to make an adjustable rifle rest for your workshop. And it's on Airgun TV. Even techier, Country Pursuits TV visits Hartford to meet two guys who shoot competitively with John Bowkit designed and tuned rifles. John Bowkit is one of the world's finest air rifle designers and this is a useful insight into his work. Now you got to hear the Duke speaking up for Duck. 75 Years and Going Strong featuring John Wayne is the new video by Ducks Unlimited which rightly calls itself the world's leader in wetlands and waterfowl conservation. The world's greatest cowboy, well you'll have to fight me for it, John Wayne explains why he supports DU and why wetlands conservation is important for everyone. Get off your horse and drink in that voice. Because this is a story about a group of people who have been concerned about living resources of this planet for over 35 years. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight sent it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Let's go now to Oxfordshire where one shooting ground put on an absolutely superb alternative to the CLA Game Fair. The cancellation of the CLA Game Fair this year was heartbreaking for many country sports enthusiasts and disastrous for lots of rural businesses. But some of them don't take news like that lying down, and among the tough nuts is the Oxford Gun Company. It set up its own mini game fair on the same weekend. It was a big challenge, um, and we did have some sort of headaches and late nights, but we've managed to pull Sonic off, and hopefully everyone's enjoyed it. Yesterday was the first day. Um, which we were, well, I was worried that we wouldn't get anyone there. And my father was worried that we'd get 20,000 people, the amount of times it's been on Facebook and Twitter and so on. Um, but we got two, 250 people, which worked out as a brilliant day. Everyone said they enjoyed the shooting, they enjoyed the trade stands, they enjoyed the shop. Um, everyone's put a lot of effort into it and it worked well on the first day. And today it's still early doors and hopefully everyone's going to enjoy what we've tried to put together. The Florent family-run business has provided lots of companies with the ideal opportunity to promote their wares. It's never going to replace the CLA and the 150-odd thousand visitors, but there's quite a few people here today, there's quite a few people shooting, there's a lot of kids around, families, it's, it, it's a nice atmosphere to work in. There are even new gun launches, it's just like the real CLA. Well, I've known the Florent family for many years, in fact more than 30 years. They're lovely people, with the CLA cancelled, David Florent had the great idea of having a mini game fair here and we've all been having a really good time, really happy event, really nice people and full marks to them for stepping in after the disaster of the cancellation of the game fair. You may have seen a clip from their new rabbit shooting video in our hunting YouTube item. Young Country Sports Channel was at the event with founder Charlie Bryant busy filming. Yeah it's going good, we've got a few good sponsors in the bag. Uh, let's see if we can beat Charlie Jacoby too. Uh, and what's your inspiration behind Country Sports Channel? It's just getting the younger generation in and I've known like Rob Collins, people might know him from Pass It On. He's doing the same thing but actually taking the younger generation into the field. We're just on the YouTube side and getting them liking it and getting interacting. 
The Oxford Gun Company is an award-winning clay ground as well as a shop, so it's no surprise that clays form a major part of its game fair weekend. What have you been like today? Oh, my shoot is going quite good. I just shot a 10, then I shot a straight 10. I did good on the rabbit by eating our old 16. I beat my dad, and my dad only got a 10. <laughs> It doesn't feel good at the time, but uh, I'm glad he's getting there. He is definitely uh, overtaking me now, no trouble. And uh, it's a pleasure to see him shoot that well, actually. So, will the Oxford Gun Company version leave the CLA nervous that its showpiece calendar event is about to be replaced? Probably not, but that doesn't mean a great time is not had by all. <sighs> Well, it's now quarter past three. I've just managed to grab a bit of lunch. It's been absolute chaos in the shop. Very, very good indeed. Yep. Um, ten, I was ten this morning. We thought it was going to be an absolute disaster. Then the floodgates opened, and we've been absolutely packed ever since. It's been a brilliant day. Sun's shining, um, and it's just really worked very, very well indeed. Um, it's nice that some of the trade decided to support Dave with his idea, Browning as usual, came up trumps and supports everything. Um, it's a pity sometimes that some of the other big manufacturers don't leap in like, we've done, like Browning do, but that's the way the trade is. But no, it's been an absolutely brilliant day and I think everybody's thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Well, we're back next week, and if you are watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button, which is about there, or one of these panels just here, and you'll get our programme every week from YouTube. Or go to our shows page, www.youtube.com forward slash show forward slash Fieldsports Britain, or indeed our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, and click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom, pop your email address into the constant contact box. This has been Fieldsports Britain from a beach.